Codemasters has had a strong run in the past couple of years. With the well-received Dirt Rally 2.0, the UK-based studio showed the world that they were the masters at what they do. Crafting racing games, straddling the inner space between sim racers, and more casual experiences. Their racing stable, with multiple franchises, are all built on the old but reliable Ego engine. This year's annual update to the F1 series, F1 2019, lives up to its expectations, and with enhancements to the Ego engine, delivers a good visual experience with consistent 60fps performance across platforms. A bit of context about the F1 series first, though. Codemasters acquired the official license to Formula One in 2008, and since 2010, have released more or less annual updates to the franchise. As it's an officially licensed franchise, the F1 games incorporate real-world Formula One tracks, cars, and players. Because of the annual release cycle, there's not a lot that can be iterated on technically. Nevertheless, F1 2019 is an impressive step ahead of last year's title. PS4 Pro vs Xbox One X vs PC Comparison Performance is the Ego Engine's strong suit, and we're happy to report that, at least on this front, F1 2019 delivers. The game scales wonderfully across the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. On the console front, we analyzed the game's performance by taking some sample scenes from the game and running it through TRDrop, an open source software. Note that this tool gives us a mere demonstration of the game's performance because an exact one-to-one -one representation of performance can only be provided by the developers themselves since they have access to a vast array of tools and profilers. Both enhanced consoles target a 4K 60fps update, and the situation is as expected. They reliably hit the 60fps target, combined with an excellent motion blur, meaning that in practice F1 2019 is plenty smooth. While 4K is the resolution target for both enhanced consoles, Xbox One X output is definitely sharper than the Pro, suggesting that dynamic resolution scaling, or a checkerboard solution, is at work here. We also noticed minor differences in LOD scaling across the platforms, but this isn't something you'll notice unless you're actually doing a side-by-side -side comparison. The PC version of F1 2019 is unsurprisingly the best way to experience the game, both in terms of visuals and frame rate. Our test PC includes a GTX 1080 Ti, 16GB of GDDR4 memory, and a Ryzen 1700 CPU. F1 2019 provides a decent number of graphical settings to tinker with, including, but not limited to, post-processing, lighting quality, shadows, smoke shadows, anti-aliasing, screen space reflections, crowd quality, and weather effects. An in-game benchmark tool is also provided which provided a decent overview of the kind of performance you can expect from your hardware. Our setup had no problems at all, handing in a very consistent 60fps with every setting maxed out. Mainstream hardware performs admirably well too. As expected, the PC version is noticeably better than what's available on the base consoles. Overall, while we're not particularly impressed with the visuals, more on this in a bit, the game scales well across multiple hardware configurations, and it's understandable that some things had to give in order to hit that 60fps target reliably.
Engine Overview F1 2019, along with all of Codemaster's other racing games, is built on the in-house Ego engine. Ego has seen multiple iterations ever since its first appearance in 2008's Grid Autosport, each building substantially on the other. Ten years and one and a half console generations later, Codemaster's iterative additions to the now aging engine have been just about enough to allow it to keep pace with modern racers on a technical level. Because it was built primarily with sim racers in mind, the Ego engine places a strong focus on hitting a 60 FPS target across platforms. We won't lie by saying that there were no compromises made to get there though. Stacked side by side with the likes of Gran Turismo Sport or any of the Forza Horizon titles, the Ego engine's mid-2000s roots are all too easy to see. We have a run-of-the-mill deferred renderer here, albeit with a minimum number of dynamic light sources. The Ego engine made the transition to deferred rendering with 2015's F1 iteration. The move to full dynamic lighting was accompanied by a decline in image quality though. MSAA allowed for a very clean presentation in the earlier F1 titles, however the dynamic lighting plays a big role in enabling some of the F1 2019's more compelling visual features, including smoke shadows. Realistic weather effects are one of F1-2019's big draws, and the relatively flat lighting isn't a deal breaker, at least during cloudy weather conditions. However, lighting is noticeably worse in comparison to other current games. Material Rendering So what about material rendering? Well, this is one of F1-2019's definite weak points. While a physically based material rendering pipeline was integrated into the Ego engine with this F1-2018 outing, Codemaster's implementation of PBR is one of the least convincing we've seen this generation. Material properties just don't look right. PBR algorithms differentiate between metallic and non-metallic surfaces, and this is in order to accommodate the differences in how metallic and vitreous objects in the real world reflect light differently, even if they're equally glossy. Car surfaces don't look right, while other metal objects such as fences show a combination of poor material quality, low-res textures, and the flat lighting. When it comes to non-metallic surfaces, tarmac is represented faithfully. Screen space reflections in rainy conditions help here, while other surfaces like concrete and plastic are not. Materials are very much a mixed bag with most surfaces looking quite poor. Lighting Quality As we'd mentioned earlier, lighting quality in F1 2019 isn't that great. The move to a deferred renderer means that multiple light sources should theoretically be casting light. However, what we noticed is that F1 2019 primarily makes use of pre-baked light maps. This is understandable considering the static nature of light sources in the game, however car models, both yours and the other cars, just don't appear to sit correctly in the scene, missing out on the shadows they should be casting under bright street lighting. While cloudy conditions see the best use of post-processing effects, they also bring out the worst in F1-2019's lighting, leading to a sterile, flat look. Model quality, texture quality, and post-processing Model quality is a mixed bag. As with many racers, car models are a strong point. Car models aren't quite up to par with what we've seen in Project Cars, Forza, and the like, but still, we're talking about poly counts in the upper five digits. This means smooth models with minimal blockiness and a relatively detailed cockpit camera experience. When viewed up close, we did notice some blockiness in the safety halo and steering wheel, but this isn't something you'll likely pay attention to in the midst of the action. NPC models are an entirely different matter, though. It's clear that NPC modeling had a limited budget. Characters are blocky with low poly counts and animations are stiff. Facial animations are reasonably expressive, but low-resolution character textures undermine this. Subsurface scattering is deployed for NPC skin, but because of the low quality of the skin texture itself, it simply makes what would otherwise be a glossy mess slightly duller. Car texture quality is great, and cockpit textures aren't a blurry mess. This is in contrast to environmental textures, which range from passable, in the case of road surfaces, to downright terrible when it comes to character and incidental environmental details. The post-processing pipeline is F1-2019's strong suit, as we'd mentioned earlier. It's evident that Codemaster's technical compromises to get the game up and running at 60 FPS across platforms is the most evident here. Where lighting and material quality are weak points, smoke and mirrors post-processing effects are leaned on pretty heavily. Per-object motion blur is utilized with a high sample count. It's easiest to see this on the individual wheels of your car when you've pulled the camera back. Together with the smooth 60 FPS update, this allows F1 2019 to really convey a fluid sense of motion. Screen space ambient occlusion is present, but SSAO is rudimentary even in the maxed out PC version of the game. AO around some objects like grass has noticeable haloing. AO coverage isn't very comprehensive either, with some parts of the scene not being occluded when they should be. Screen space reflections really shine in F1 2019 though, no pun intended. Car models appear to use SSR instead of cube maps. This has a major impact on visuals, particularly when you're in the cockpit view. While as mentioned, material quality itself is poor, car reflections are high res and detailed. The F1 series has boasted of dynamic environmental rendering, and this is reflected in the post-process pipeline too. During rainy scenes, a subtle raindrop affects on the hood, not enough to obscure the track, but enough to convey the sense of racing through a downpour. 
In terms of the back end, Codemasters have finally committed to DX12. F1 2018's DX12 implementation was something of an afterthought and didn't actually yield significant performance gains, even after being patched in. In F1 2019, DX12 offers meaningful performance gains, especially with lower end CPUs. Conclusion From a technical perspective, F1 2019 is a good, but not great, successor to F1 2018. With the arrival of the new consoles next year, we're excited to see how Codemasters will take the F1 franchise to the 9th gen. Will the Ego engine ride again, or will we finally see Codemasters craft an engine that'll make full use of the next gen console's capabilities? And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily. Also, don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon, that way you don't miss out on any of our videos.